Hi, this is Kush from Creative Pad Photography and in this video we'll be learning about what a stop of light or a stop of exposure means in photography. So let's start. So a lot of times you must have heard photographers talk like this, that let's increase the ISO by three or four stops. Or sometimes when you're shopping around for a lens which comes with an image stabilization or a vibration reduction mechanism, you might hear the retailer tell you that this lens will save you around three or four stops of light. So what exactly is a stop of light? Now a stop of light is not really a fundamental or scientific unit of light, but it's just a way that photographers measure light because it's very, very important. So a stop of light basically refers to the amount of light that is coming inside the camera. Now as a photographer, you know that when you're shooting in the manual mode, you can control the amount of light that is coming in your camera by changing your shutter speed, ISO and aperture. So when you change any of these settings in such a way that you double the amount of light coming in, the, in your camera, that means you just gained one stop of light. So one stop of light, an increase in one stop of light basically means that you're doubling the amount of light that is coming in the camera. Similarly, if you were to change your settings in such a way that the amount of light coming in the camera becomes half of what it was before, then you're reducing the amount of light by one stop. Now I know this can sound a bit confusing, so in order to understand this better, let's dive into our digital whiteboard and I'll give you some examples which will make all of this clear. So let's go there. Okay, so let's say that this is our, oops, this is our DSLR camera and you know that at any point of time when you're shooting, there's a certain amount of light that is entering the camera. So let's represent that light by these two arrows and let's call this amount of light which is coming inside the camera as x okay now let's assume that we're shooting and our settings are 1 by 60 shutter speed f8 and let's say iso 800 i'm just taking any random settings this doesn't really have to make sense right now just to explain you the concept so let's say if i decide to change these settings and i go from so at these settings X amount of light is coming in the camera and let's say I change my shutter speed from 1 by 60 to 1 by 30. So what I've done is I've basically reduced my shutter speed, made it slower. So now the shutter will open and close in 1 by 30th of the second as opposed to 1 by 60th of a second, which means it'll take twice the amount of time to open and close, which also means that now twice the amount of light will be able to come inside the camera as compared to X. So right now we can, let's say, represent this by four arrows because it's going to double. So Let's say that now this will become from x, we'll go to 2x when we make this change. So what we've done is since we've gone from x to 2x, we've doubled the amount of light. So we have just increased our exposure by one stop of light. So that's what one stop means, that you're doubling the amount of light by changing any of the settings. So let's, I'm later also going to show you how you can do that with aperture and ISO. Now let's also show you the opposite scenario. Let's say if I were to go from 1 by 60 and this time I were to make my shutter speed faster instead of slower and you know double it so that's going to be 1 by 120 but 1 by 120 is not really available on the camera so it's 1 by 125 but that would mean that we are basically this time cutting down the light instead of increasing and how much by half because we are increasing the sh shutter speed in that proportion so now our next amount of light will be just a single arrow these three arrows would go. So as compared to X, X was represented by two arrows. Now we're reducing the amount of light by half, right? So this is basically gonna be X by two. So when we do this, so when we made this change now, what we've done is we have gone backwards by one stop of light or we've reduced one stop of exposure or light. So let's call this minus one. This is the change that we made. So this is how stops of light really work. Now, the same thing will happen, let's say, if you were on ISO. So if you were to go from ISO 800 all the way to ISO 1600, then what we're doing is we're basically, again, increasing the exposure by one stop because we're doubling the amount of light that is coming. So because this figure is double, 1600 is double of 800. And let's say if you were to go from 800 to 400, then we're going to be decreasing our exposure by one stop of light. Right? That's because 400 is half of 800. Now, when it comes to aperture, this can be a bit tricky for beginners to understand because what you'll assume by seeing shutter speed and ISO is that F8, let's say if you were to reduce a stop of light, what you would assume naturally is that going from F8 to F4, 
right, should be what cuts down one, one stop of light. But with the aperture, it's slightly different. Now, you know how to change the aperture, right? So when you rotate the command dial to change the aperture, what you must have noticed is that it doesn't straight away start reducing. So it, let's say if you're at F8, you just slightly rotate the dial and it's gonna go where? It's gonna go to F7.1, right? Then when you again rotate it, it's gonna go to F, how much does it go to? I think 6.3, right? And then let's say you do it one more time, it's gonna go to F5.6. So how many times have you rotated? One, two, and three. So basically after, you know, doing it thrice, you're gonna go from F8 to F5.6. So how aperture changes in stops is that when you do this three times, then you have gone and you know in this case we have reduced or rather in this case we've increased by one stop of light because when you're decreasing the f-stop number the hole opens up right so we're letting in more light but the important thing is it happens in these three counts first second and third and now you stay you you would have increased by one stop of exposure the light right not from going to f8 because naturally you might think that eight by two is four but that's not how it works with aperture Right, so straightforward calculations work with ISO and shutter speed, but not with aperture. So let's say this would have increased one stop of light. Now uh, let's say if we were to, so this would have, in this case, this would have, we would have gone from X to 2X. Now let's say we want to further, you know, make this, say one more stop of light. So then what you can do is, so it's like a test for you. What will you do if I were to tell you that you're at F5.6 and I want you to increase the exposure by one stop. So what you'll do is you'll go from F5.6, you'll keep on decreasing it. So it goes to F5 and it'll go to F4.5, right? I just hope I'm correct. I think it goes to 4.5 and F4. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it goes to 4.5. So how many you know, times have we changed this? One, two, and three, right? So this at F4, at f4 as compared to f5.6 we have just increased the exposure by one stop of light so if you actually see this this actually saves or increases your exposure by two stops not one stop as you might have assumed you know when if you didn't know about this right so this is how it works with aperture so this is basically what a stop of light is either you know doubling it or making it half right now, how can this be very helpful for you? Of course, it just makes your life very easy as a photographer. For example, let's say that you're shooting a waterfall, right? And let's say that, you know, you're watching your light meter. And what you notice is that when your meter comes in the center, your shutter speed is 1 by 80 and some other settings, your aperture and your ISO, right? Now, I'm just gonna concentrate on shutter speed right now just to explain you the concept. So your meter light meter is in the center, you're, so you're getting a kind of an average base exposure at one by 80. And let's say you have a ND8 filter with you. If you must be knowing, ND8 filters, neutral density filters, they save light by three stops. So now you'll understand what, you know, when someone say that I've got a 10 stop ND filter or a six stop ND filter, what they basically mean is that it allows you to save light in terms of stops. So suppose you have a three stop ND filter. A lot of people wrongly assume that just this number represents the stop. That's not correct. When you read this, this actually means three stop. For example, a 10 stop ND filter is usually called ND thousand. Okay, so this number here does not really mean how many stops. It's just a way of naming the ND filter. You'll have to find out how many stops does it actually save. The bigger the number, uh, the more stops it saves. Right, so let's say you have an ND8 filter which saves light by three stops. Now, if you're a knowledgeable photographer and you know how stops work, what you'll simply do is, you'll say, okay, my base exposure is coming at one by 80. So, if I were to put on this ND filter, the three stop ND filter, I would be able to go from one by 80 to one by 40, and then from one by 40 to one by 20. So this is what, so this is one stop, this is, sorry, this is two stops, and then you'll be able to go one more stop. So you'll be able to go to one by 10, tenth of shutter speed, because you have a three stop ND filter. So once you put this filter on, this is the shutter speed you'll manage to get. Right now, you can, let's say you're looking for a really silky effect on the waterfall. One by 10th may not give you that, 
effect. So if you know how stops work, you can just quickly do this mental calculation and you can avoid this whole process of actually putting on the ND filter because you know that you'll only be able to go till 1 by 10th of a second which may not be enough for you as opposed to actually doing it, taking a shot and then finding out. Right, And there'll be a lot of other situations, a lot of times when you're taking two shots and you want to maintain the exposure between the two shots for some reason, but you want to change certain settings, like in one shot you want to change the ISO, in the other shot you want to change the aperture, but you want to keep the exposure the same, the brightness the same in the shot, then what you can do is you can just do this mental calculation, okay, I'm increasing the ISO by this amount, so in the next shot I should be able to reduce my or increase my aperture by this amount. So you can play around with these settings if you know how stops of light works so another example i can give you is why it's very important to buy vr which is vibration reduction or image stabilization mechanism lenses because like you know the manufacturers claim that sometimes these lenses save you three to four stops of light what do they mean by that they just mean that if you were to follow the reciprocal rule let's say if i'm shooting the uh, shooting an event and i'm shooting at 200 mm let's say i'm using the 7200 f 2.8 lens right and I'm shooting all the way at 200 mm then according to the reciprocal rule we should be at least at a shutter speed of 1 by 200th of a second right this is a bit advanced if you don't know about the reciprocal rule do check out my course called DSLR photography for beginners I'm put the link in the description of this video but basically if you know that you'll understand what I'm trying to say right so in order to avoid shake the reciprocal rule says that you should be 1 by focal length of the lens so Ideally, we should be shooting at 1 by 200, but when these manufacturers say that you've got an IS or a VR lens or a VC lens, as Tamron says, they just count, you know, they help you avoid shake. The mechanism is such that in the lens. So what they mean by that is that they say that if you switch on the VR or the IS button and you make it on, you can practically go, let's say if they're claiming four stops of light saving, then what you can do is you can go from 1 by 200 1 by 100 to 1 by let's say 1 by 50 and somewhere around 1 by 25 so instead of shooting at 1 by 200 you can break the reciprocal rule and you can shoot at at least 1 2 3 3 to 4 stops below so let's say this is a, if we are assuming that this lens allows us to you know save three stops of light if that's what the manufacturer is claiming then we'll be able to shoot at 1 by 25 from this lens and that will allow us to save a lot of iso Right, so that's why it's very popular with event people who shoot events. So let's say if at one by two hundred of a second you were cutting down a lot of light and you were shooting at an ISO of four thousand, right? Then what this means is we have just saved three stops of light, right? That means we'll be able to decrease our ISO by three stops. So we'll be able to go to two thousand ISO. That's one stop. That's two stops, and then ISO five hundred. So we'll be able to take the same shot which we were taking at 1 by 200 of a second and ISO 4000 we'll be able to take at 1 by 25th of a second and ISO 500. Why is this happening? Because we are using the vibration reduction mechanism which allows us to even shoot sharp shots without the risk of you know getting a blurry image because of the shake at 1 by 25 because of the vibration reduction mechanism. But ultimately it allows us to save, let's say, three stops of light, which makes a huge difference because it allows us to go from 4000 to 500 ISO, so your image will be much more clearer. This is why IS and VR lenses are so popular amongst photographers, right? Because they help you get good looking images which are devoid of any noise. So, mm -hmm. but the whole point in making you understand this is that you should be able to understand what a stop of light is and what does it mean to increase one stop of light, two stops of light, three stops of light, any number. On, and what it means to decrease. Once you know that, just make your life very easy as a photographer. So I hope uh, this was a slightly geeky video, I know, but I just hope that you like this. Uh, if you like this, do give it a thumbs up, do subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.